So welcome to the second part. Where we left off was uh, this idea or this consequence that let's say that we're given a matrix A and we know that it's similar to another matrix B where we can see easily the eigenvalues of B, then we would be able to get the eigenvalues of A. So to kind of motivate us, we wanna think about, well, what's the easiest matrix to find the eigenvalues? And if you think about it for a second, which class of uh, matrices are the easy to find eigenvalues? Well, those are the triangular matrices, either the upper or the lower triangular matrices. And there's actually kind of a subclass that has that is both upper triangular and lower triangular, and those are the diagonal matrices. All right. So the diagonal matrix is just a matrix where all of the uh, entries off of the diagonal are zero. Okay, and so, and why is it easy? Because the eigenvalues are simply the entries on the diagonal. Okay, so we'll see that in a second when we do some examples. So we're going to introduce uh, the notion of diagonalizable. So A is diagonalizable if A is similar to a diagonal matrix, and maybe I should give it a name here. So let me erase that here, to a diagonal matrix D, i.e., there exists an invertible matrix P such that the diagonal matrix P can be written as P inverse A times P, or another way of saying it is A can be written as P times D times P inverse. Okay. Now, you may wonder, well, does even such a thing exist here? And yeah, just let me give you an example of this. So it's kind of an example of a matrix that is diagonalizable. So we have uh, the matrix 1, 0, 6, negative 1. We have 1, 0, 3, 1. Uh, then I have a diagonal matrix here, 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And then I have another matrix, which is 1, 0, minus three and one. And you can check that this is P and this is P inverse. These two matrices are inverses of each other. And the other thing that we can notice is we have this matrix right here and it's being similar to a diagonal matrix because we have the D in the middle here in this spot right here. So according to the last theorem, the eigenvalues of this matrix are the eigenvalues of this diagonal matrix, and the eigenvalues of a diagonal matrix are just the entries on the entries on the diagonal. So the eigenvalues of A are lambda equals one and negative one. So there are cases where a matrix can be a matrix is diagonalizable. And oh, and just as I note that, uh, and it, because I've said this a couple times, just so it's in your notes, note that if A is diagonalizable, the the diagonal values of D are the eigenvalues. of A. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Now you may be wondering like why would somebody want to find the diagonalization? So let me kind of before we show how to find the diagonalization, let me show you what it can do for you. So one of the things that you can do is you can actually compute powers of matrices quite fast once you found the diagonalization of the matrix. So kind of hiding in the background is the following fact, that if you start with a diagonal matrix, so here I have zeros off of the diagonal and I have its diagonal entry, then the d's power or the case power of the diagonal matrix is simply raising the power of each entry in the diagonal by the k. So you end up with a new diagonal matrix and you just are raising the power of each term. So you don't actually have to do K multiplications of matrices. You just go whatever this number was, if it was two and if the K was 10, you would have two to the 10. So you take all of these entries and raise it to the appropriate power. Okay. And now the nice thing here is that in if A is diagonalizable, that is you can write it as uh, invertible matrix P times a diagonal matrix, then P inverse, then A to the K 
it's actually equal to p d to the k times p inverse. Okay, and so let me first justify why this is very good and fast in order to compute it. Normally, if you were to compute the kth power, so think of the k as just being 10, I would have to multiply the matrix A by itself 10 times. So I have to do 10 matrix multiplications. Over here, I would first take D to the 10. So that would be a very simple calculation because I just have to do raise each of the diagonal entries by the power of 10 to get a new matrix. And then I'm only doing three matrix multiplications at the end. So you can imagine on this side, I did 10 matrix multiplications. On this side, I'm only doing three matrix multiplication. So it's clearly going to be faster using this approach than this approach. And now let me justify why the statement is true. Well, a to the k, because it's a is diagonalizable, we can write it as p times d times p inverse time raised to the power of k. So think about what that means, that this is equal to p d p inverse, p d p inverse. And you're doing that k times, right? So k times. But notice that you can regroup you can regroup it so that you have p d p inverse p d p inverse p and so on until the end where you get this okay and p inverse times p is just the identity so all of these middle terms collapse they all kill each other so you end up with p d d you end up with KDs, right? So you end up with K of these guys. And so that just becomes P D to the K times P inverse. And that's all that we needed to finish the proof. Okay, so this shows you now that our matrix, which involved K multiple matrix multiplications can be reduced to doing three matrix multiplications. And as an example, we already showed that this matrix here was diagonalizable. And let's say I want to compute the 100th power of this matrix. Okay, And you'd think, well, this is very hard. I better get octave out. But actually, you don't need to because we already found the diagonalization. And because we're taking the 100th power, I have to take uh, 1 to the power of 100. And I have to take negative 1 to the power of 100. And then I'm multiplying it by the inverse, 1, 0, minus 3, 1. Okay, And I, I actually, you can see it over here. This was the diagonalization of the matrix that we're starting with. So I'm just raising each of these diagonal entries to the appropriate power. And in this case, what I have is 1, 0, 3, 1. And these guys just become 1s. And this becomes 1, 0, minus 3, 1. So notice that this is the identity matrix. This is the matrix P, and this is its inverse. So at the end of the day, when you crank everything out, you actually get the identity matrix. So I didn't have to do much work in order to get this information. And so hopefully you see that there's an advantage to finding the diagonalization. There may be situations where you want to compute many, many powers of your matrix A, and this would give you a shortcut. So in the next part, I want to look at kind of two questions. When is A diagonalizable? And question two, if A is diagonalizable, how do you find the matrix P and the matrix D? Okay, that will be explained in the next part.